guitar swing made you cry And those beautiful teardrops in your eyes Made me thankful of all our memories Like dancing in the kitchen Date nights filled with beer and chicken Hey everybody, Anna, lovely with lard, here at Sober Mesa Farm Kitchen. And today we are getting ready to make an amazing after school snack for my kids that they will devour in minutes. And I need to get it started, it's early morning and I need to get it started, um, getting it so it can sit in the refrigerator for a while. But today we're getting ready to make the best, the world's best chocolate chip cookies. And these are a little bit unique because guess what? We're unique and we love lard. So guess what's going in our chocolate chip cookies? Yes, we are putting some amazing Magnolista lard in with our cookies today. So. Let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's get these guys going because they gotta refrigerate for a while, the dough. So here are the ingredients that you're gonna need to gather and get ready for these amazing cookies. Life when times are dark and I'll always try to bring a spark to let you know I love you when times are hard. It's the time spent laughing around the table, sharing stories about who we are and who we wanna be. It's the wine we drink and the thoughts we think and the praise for our family. Cause I got no regrets today as long as you're with me. So here's to a wonderful wife, a mother and a friend who loves everyone with a love that knows no end. And not a day goes by where I don't want okay, you to know. Okay, everybody, so that I'll as you can see, I have all my ingredients ready. I love just getting everything ready because then it just comes together super quick. Um, but before we actually get going on all of um, make all the mixing and everything, we the first thing we need to do is we actually need to combine our dry ingredients because we'll add the dry ingredients to the wet ones a little bit at a time. So we want to go ahead. We have three cups of all-purpose flour right here. So we have three cups of all-purpose flour. We're going to add one teaspoon of salt into this and one teaspoon of baking soda. Now remember, not baking powder, but we want baking soda. Alright, and I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to grab one of my wooden spoons and I'm going to give that just a nice little mixeroo right there. Now I want to talk super quick before we come back here to my mixer and my baking area. Um, some of you are probably like, egat, I don't have lard. You know what? It's okay if you don't have lard. So we have, um, you can also do two sticks of butter. Now each one of these sticks of butter are 113.5 grams. And so if you don't have lard, you can have two sticks of butter or two sticks of butter equals one cup of butter. Each stick is worth a half a cup. Okay, so remember those. But so what I did with my lard is I measured out 113.5 grams. So if you don't have the lard, it's okay. Just use another stick of butter. Do not use Crisco. We don't know the ingredients that are in Crisco. Come on. So butter or lard, natural ingredients. Now, a couple other things I want to point out to you that I um, had listed in the ingredients that you need to that you can have that are additional if you want. Now they're chocolate chip cookies, so obviously we're going to put chocolate chips in our chocolate chip cookies. But we like to add a little unique flavor to this. As Guy Fieri would say, it is flavor town. So this is why we love to add. We're going to add um, about a fourth of a cup of crackling, pork cracklings, to our chocolate chip cookies too. So when I render the lard, we actually grind our lard and then it gives me just little itty bitty pieces of cracklings and so that is and then I brown them just a little bit I freeze them and then I pull them out when I need them and then I just brown them just a little bit because they aren't as brown as this just to get a little bit more of that flavor so it's almost like we're putting bacon inside of our cookies so I like having that you don't have to put that not very many people have cracklings like this so that's okay 
And then also another thing that I absolutely love putting in with my chocolate chips because it adds a little bit of texture and amazing flavor too. So we have a company here in Northwest Arkansas called Markham and Fitz and it is a chocolate company and they make their own chocolate, spin their own chocolate, make their own chocolate bars, which are phenomenal. So if you're from Northwest Arkansas and have never been there, please look it up. It's in Bentonville, Arkansas. You can also Google them if you need to, but they have something called Cocoa Nibs. And the Cocoa Nibs, we are going to be adding to this. You don't have to be adding the Cocoa Nibs, but if they're just these little crunchy, amazing yummers that are, if I believe correct, Mmm, they are like, they're bitter, they're kind of bitter, but they just add this like really unique texture. So we're also adding probably about a third a cup of that to our mixture as well. You don't have to add that. If you wanted to add nuts to this, you totally could add nuts. If you just play around with it, but this is what we enjoy of our family and what we think makes these cookies super unique, super amazing. So. Let's go ahead, head over to our mixer, and we're gonna get these guys going. Okay, everybody, so I'm over here. I got all my ingredients that I'm gonna need, and I got my KitchenAid mixer ready to rock and roll, and I'm telling you what, I probably will eat a lot of this dough. Don't tell my kids. I will eat a lot of this dough. Just nibble, nibble, nibble. Ooh, so good. So let's get mixing. All right, I'm gonna add my softened lard into my bowl here and get all the goodies out of that bowl. And then I'm also gonna be adding my soft butter. So one stick of soft butter and 113.5 grams of soft lard. And not a day goes by where I don't want you to know that I'll always... All right, we're gonna cream those fats together and now we're going to add a half a cup of white granulated sugar to that, creaming it for about a minute or so. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our brown sugar into this and we'll cream for several minutes. After a couple minutes, we wanna stop and scrape down the edges. All right, I stopped my mixer and now I'm gonna be adding my eggs one at a time. Let's get that added and then I'm gonna incorporate it really well before I add my second egg. Getting those all really incorporated. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna scrape this down and then I'm gonna turn it back on and add my vanilla. All right, our last step is to add dry ingredients. I stopped my mixer and here I have all my dry ingredients mixed together. I'm gonna lift that up and add just a little bit in at a time. We don't wanna add it all at once. We're gonna add a little bit at a time. And when we turn this back on, make sure that you're turning it on at a low speed so it doesn't make a large mess. So we'll keep going until all the flour is incorporated. It's the time spent laughing around the table. Sharing stories about who we are and who we want to be. It's the wine we drink and the thoughts we think and the praise for our All right, here we got our dough right here, and we're getting ready to add all the good stuff. So two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips, a third of a cup of our cocoa nibs, and a fourth of a cup of pork cracklings. And we're just going to stir this in until it's all well incorporated. And I like to hand stir it in just to ensure that I get it all in the dough. It's the time spent laughing around the table Sharing stories about who we are and who we want to be All right, once I get this all incorporated, I'm going to wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. But need to do it for at least 30 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. So we kind of missed the mark for after school snack but we have finished dinner and it is time to have dessert so why not have these amazing chocolate chip cookies with dessert 
So I'm coming back here. I'm going to turn my oven on to preheat it and get my pans ready. We want our oven preheated to 350 degrees. It has been, that cookie dough now has been in the refrigerator for nine hours. It's going to make amazing cookies. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out of the refrigerator as well. So that way it's not just rock hard and it's hard to scoop. Um, we'll get that pulled out. We'll get our pans going. I'm going to preheat my oven back here and we will get these cookies in that oven so we can have dessert. Okay, so I lined my baking sheets with parchment paper. It just makes it for an easier cleanup. If you don't have parchment paper, it's fine. You don't need to um, grease the cookie sheets at all because of the amount of fat that is in these cookies. So I'm going to go ahead. I have this scooper and let me tell you it's been for years I didn't have one of these and I finally broke down we actually have three of them now but golly it just makes it so much easier so if you don't have it you can use two cook your two um, spoons and just scoop it up and scrape it on here but we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna make scoops we're gonna do about two tablespoons um, per cookie we're gonna let's put it on to our cookie sheet in just remember you don't want these cookies super close together so when you do cookies you don't want them like right on top of each other so I usually do two and then a third the next in the next row I do a third one I do one right in the middle I'd rather have two not as many cookies on here than too many and then they just all kind of smush together so I'd rather kind of watch that now with the oven being heated up to 350 degrees we are going to cook these for 10 minutes and then we're going to check them to make sure that they are done so when they're done when we pull them out we want them barely golden brown and we're going to let them sit on the cookie sheet for a couple minutes for two minutes after we pull them out of the oven and then after that we put them onto a cooling rack and let them cool finish cooling there so here we have our cookies I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna throw these bad boys into whoa watch that sucker roll <laughs> like cookie dough bowling <laughs> now I know it's really, for me, I would much rather just eat this wad of cookie dough. And I know some of you out there would rather eat the wad of cookie dough, but these cookies are delicious. So let's go ahead and get this in the oven, set the timer for 10 minutes, and we'll check back and see where we're at. One thing I forgot to mention um, before I put that um, batch of cookies in the oven, you do want to slightly smash the dough down just because it's so firm. So with your fingers, just kind of with the back of a spatula or back of a spoon, whatever works, I usually just use my hand, a little push down on all of the cookies. Just like that. And this batch is actually ready. We're waiting on the other batch to get out of the oven. Um, oh, there's the timer. Let's go ahead and check those cookies. All right. So those actually need about two more minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for two more minutes and I just I will know that my next batch that I put in there I'm gonna put in for 12 minutes versus the 10 minutes. So two minutes We'll pull these out let them rest for two minutes and uh, We'll be good to go All right, so our timers going off after an additional two minutes So I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna pull this pan out and I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy in I'm gonna put the other pan right here to cool all right, let's look really quick before I set, before I put the other pan in, just because. All right. So now, one trick to chocolate chip cookies is you don't want to overcook them. I think a lot of people have a tendency to overcook their chocolate chip cookies. So we're going to go ahead. If you can kind of see around some of these, they're getting golden brown around the edges and underneath. So that's what we're looking for. 
If you look for it to be golden brown on top, then your cookie's probably overcooked. We want them a little soft and a little chewy, and by doing that um, for 12 minutes, everything is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this batch in the oven, set my timer for 12 minutes, in two more minutes, we'll take these off and let them cool completely on the rack, and we will be ready for dessert for our family. Okay, so I just pulled out the second pan, got a third pan in the oven. I just wanted to show you really quick what these cookies look like. They've been, um, I took them off the pan and I'm putting, letting them cool completely on the cooling rack, but I just want to show you the bottom of the cookie. You see how there's just a slight browning on the bottom of the cookie? That's what we're going for. That's what we want. All right, just that slight yummy goodness. So we're going to go ahead and keep going until all of our cookie dough is done. And when we're done, we will sit down and enjoy it as a family. So we'll be right back. All right, so we are getting ready to sit down and watch some Halloween movies. But my youngest son, Lyle, Lou, here, is going to help test my cookies. Lyle, are you ready to have one of these cookies with me? Yes. He's got himself a glass of milk. Perfect, there's that for you, bud. Well, he's gonna do the dip. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take a bite. Let's go ahead, ready, here we go. Mm. Those are so good. Those are good, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, that lard makes these cookies taste amazing. Those cracklings in there, totally different twist than you've ever had before. So, from our happy home to your home, may God bless you and happy cooking. To let you know I love you when times are hard. It's the time spent laughing around the table, sharing stories about who